Hello, this is Claude, and today I will show you how I was able to drastically improve my Cooler Master MK750 keyboard by replacing the Cherry Brown switches with the PC Gaming Race Glorious Panda uh, tactile switches and fixing the rattle noise from the stabilizers. Um, just going to show you real quick the uh, Glorious uh, switches, the Panda's tactile 67 grams. Uh, this is what they look like. Um, little, let's hear the sound. All right, so this is what I will be using today. I will just make a quick comment on these uh, pandas from Glorious. In comparison with the uh, the uh, Holy Pandas from Drop, um, which I do uh, on all the reviews that I do, all the videos that I do, everything that I talk about are items that I have purchased. Uh, so I have purchased uh, many sets of the, uh, these are dude, uh, many sets of uh, Holy Pandas from Drop. And uh, as much as... Uh, I've had issues with a uh, PC gaming race with their logistics uh, and the way they they do their launches. Uh, I, in my book, the example, the Model Low, the first uh, mouse series was uh, very glitchy and the quality was very poor. I got a lot of hate for it on my video, but still, uh, as much as I've had issues with this company, I have to say that these glorious pandas compared to the holy pandas, uh, there's a lot of reviews on both of them, and they will tell you what they, you know, what they, their conclusion will be. Uh, and they always say, "Well, the holy panda from Drop is a little better than the." You know what? In my opinion, my this is just an opinion. My opinion, based on my experience as a uh, as a uh, consumer, is that the glorious pandas and not only are they cheaper, I think they're better. Um, on the Drop holy pandas, I've had a lot of uh, stems broken. Um, and uh, you know different issues. Um, none of that with these glorious pandas. I just want to say that real quick because uh, you know uh, when a company does something good, uh, it, it has to be told. And uh, on this one, they did a very good job on these pandas. Now, the main reason why I wanted to open this keyboard in the first place uh, was because of the massive rattle noise that the stabilizers were making. Uh, so uh, let me uh, you know let you hear the difference uh, of the stabilizer originally, the way they came out of the factory. Now let's see the stabilizers the way uh, that they came out of the factory, but on top on the top plate, uh, so you can really appreciate how loose they, they were from uh, the factory. Now let's compare the major difference that it makes after lubing the stabilizers with the Crytox GPL205 grade zero. Also know that I did put some band-aid tape where the stabilizer snap into place to make them a much tighter fit, not allowing any play at all uh, with these stabilizers where they connect into the top plate. So I just put it there on both sides to create some tension. So you, you will hear there's absolutely no rattle anymore. Nothing is rattling, so that's, that's all I did, all right? Anyway, uh, on this uh, keyboard, uh, the only thing you need to do uh, to open the keyboard, you just there's no screws in the bottom plate, so you don't have to worry about any screws in the bottom plate or removing the feet. Uh, you only have to remove the top keycaps and all the screws on the top plate. Once the screws are removed, then you have to be very careful when trying to separate the top from the bottom uh, because you first have to remove the front plastic plate uh, with the Cooler Master logo on it, uh, this pl uh, plastic plate in front right here. Uh, you have to be careful. You just you know pull this out gently. And uh, it's just snap and clip, so you have to be careful with that, all right? Uh, once this uh, front plastic plate is removed, then you open the keyboard gently, like any other keyboard, in order to be able to disconnect the cable from the PCB to the U USB module. There's also a ribbon cable module uh, for the media keys. Uh, I didn't try to snap it out. Uh, there was no point of doing that. I just removed the two screws on this module and just moved the cluster of keys out of the way uh, for desoldering and resoldering the switches. So let's take a look at all the components of that keyboard. So the bottom tree is actually pretty uh, fairly simple. Uh, the PCB itself is kind of uh, busy with all the various components, the chips, the capacitors, uh, old style diodes. Uh, diodes, uh, surprisingly, and especially with the uh, tight uh, cutout uh, for the media keys as well. Uh, and we can see that certain switches also are barely on the edges of the PCB, 
uh, since the Cooler Master really tried to make this keyboard as small as they could, uh, so which is a good thing, but uh, the PCB, I found that some of the, the legs uh, that uh, on the switches were actually not completely uh, surrounded uh, by uh, the soldering mask. All right, so uh, I, I actually desoldered uh, all the uh, brown switches with my trusted Hacko desoldering tool uh, that makes this a snap. Uh, desoldering all the switches uh, with this tool uh, actually takes about 10 to 15 minutes with this tool, so it's, it's fairly easy. Uh, if you don't have that tool, it's, it's much more difficult. Uh, but uh, before installing the uh, Glorious Pandas, I did lube the springs uh, in the back of the switches uh, with some uh, uh, super lube uh, silicon oil I'm going to show that right now. This is what I've been using. Just put uh, open all the switches, uh, and I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm using, there's different tools that can be used. Uh, I've got one tool from AliExpress, actually. Let me show you that. So this is the uh, the, 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 the um, KBD fans uh, tool to open the switches, and I just can't. It's very difficult to open. And I have actually one that I got from AliExpress, little cat in there. Um, actually, very easy to open. You just have to uh, glue the, uh, the, uh, the magnets, but uh, it's very easy to open the switches with the tool itself, uh, if I can just show you quickly. Just put the, the switches in here. There you go. And then after that, you can just well, open the switch, all right? So that's very easy to do, open the switch just like that, all right? And reclosing the switch. All right, that's... Fairly easy. All right. All right. So that's for the opening the switches. All right. So uh, like I said, I did loop the springs in the bag with the uh, that the super loop silicon, and I also looped all the channels in the inner housing of the switches with the Tribosys 3204. I generously lubed the stabilizer with Crytox GPL 205 grade zero. I did not loop the stems themselves on the switches for this mod. I resorted all the panda switches, but note that there are no screws holding the PCB to the top plate. Important to note, uh, most uh, keyboards do have that. That PCB uh, has two springs on it to keep the proper tension with the top plate and the PCB. And uh, the top plate are held together by the soldered switches themselves, which is why uh, when soldering the switches back in, I squared the PCB with uh, putting uh, the switches in all four corners, and I made sure to push as much as I could on the PCB while soldering them back in. I connected the cable from the PCB and the USB port and tested all the keys with EK switch header uh, program and once this was successfully done, I then I just reassembled the keyboard in the reverse steps that I mentioned earlier. Listen to the difference of the lubed Glorious Panda switches and lubed and taped stabilizers versus the original form factor with the unlubed Cherry Browns and Wobbly stabilizers. So this modification, including lubing the switches and the stabilizers, is about five to seven uh, hour job, but uh, technically it's not that hard as long as you have the proper desoldering tool. Uh, so, all right, so this is it for me on this one. Uh, thanks uh, for watching the uh, video. I hope you enjoy the content. And also, uh, like I said earlier, consider uh, liking the video and subscribing. So thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.